Welcome back to Arcade, I am Super Tommy, and in this video we're going to look at Phaser 3 and MobX. If you've never heard of MobX, it is a state management library and we'll talk more about that in this video. This is going to be a great way to help you manage state in your Phaser 3 game. We're going to look at how you can normally do cross scene state management. So for example, if you have your game in one scene and your UI in another scene, you want to update the UI based on maybe health lives score or something like that that all gets determined in the game scene you want to update that in your ui scene we'll look at two ways that you can do that now and then we're going to go look at what mobx is we'll give you a introduction into mobx basically how it works relative to the other cross scene state examples we're going to show you in the first part here and then last one the third thing we're going to do is give you a code example of how you can use MobX and Phaser 3 to update UI super easily. All right, let's look at cross scene state. So like we said before, you have your game here and then you have your UI scene. In this case, there's just something happening in your game like this ghost or your character. And then in the UI is your health, for example, those, those three hearts there. Now, one way you can do this is to have a direct reference to your scene. Now in Phaser, you can just get your scene from the scene manager and then kind of get direct references to maybe a UI element or a text or sprite and then call methods on those objects directly which while you can do that it makes them very tightly coupled and if you change a name of something in your UI, uh, UI scene or you do other changes it'll break whatever your code was in the game scene so it makes it a bit more fragile now one thing you can do to make it a little less fragile is using events so an event is something uh, we've talked about on the Arcade blog as well. But the basic premise is you have an event emitter, call it the event center. And what that does is it's a separate thing outside of the scene where the game scene, for example, can send an event to that event center. And then any other one like the UI scene or any other object or instance can listen for an event. So, for example, we can say here the game can, uh, can emit an event called uh, damage taken or like health change or something. And then your UI scene can listen for that event and be like, oh, okay, something happened. Let me now uh, update my UI based on that event. Now that does work pretty well, but there's actually an easier way with MobX. So let's take a look at what MobX is. Now MobX is an unopinionated reactive state management library. Now, what does that actually mean? We'll show you an example shortly but if you've used react or a react like library like next you may have used redux or and you may have come across mobx which is popular with react apps and what mobx does is it gives you a separate area or a separate store let's say where you can put your state so for example here we have the same game scene and the ui scene and what happens here is we have a state object on the right side there with health we set it to 100 here for this example. And what those yellow arrows we have here means is that our game can read and write to this state and our UI can both read and write to the state. And whenever anyone does that, it'll react and let the other uh, scene, the game scene or the UI scene, know that that variable has changed or that state has changed. And then we can do whatever we want in our UI scene or our game scene. Now, it'll be a lot easier to understand by showing it to you in the code. Now, before we get into the code, if you enjoy our videos on game development in Phaser 3, Kaboom JS, Calisius, and other web technologies, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos on using these web technologies and other programming fundamentals like managing state here with MobX in this video. So be sure to like and subscribe for more videos and so you don't miss any new videos that we do come out with. Okay, we're going to get into the coding shortly, but this is the example that we have right here. This is the spaceship, um, and we're going to collect coins, and you see this, this uh, UFO spaceship is controlled by arrow keys. So if you press right, the right, oh, flipped over, the right thruster comes on. If you press left, the left thruster comes on, and you press both, they uh, both come on and it can fly better. So you see now we're collecting these coins, we're hitting them rather, and our UI up here is not being updated. What we want to do is to be able to update that UI as we collect the coins. So now let's jump to VS Code. 
All right, here we are in VS Code. We are in our MobX scene here. So think of this as your game scene. We've got some uh, setup that we've already done. So we just have our ship cursors, our left and right exhaust, those particles. Now we're launching our UI scene here and our arrow scene, which is for the uh, thing to show you which arrows are being pressed. And then we're loading our images here, our ship or smoke or coin, that's what we're using create our, our particles. Now the interesting thing here, the, the relevant thing here for this example, is we're using Matter.js and when we create each coin here on a loop that every one second, we're gonna create a coin. And in that coin, we're gonna do set on collide so that when it collides with the player, we're gonna do is destroy the coin. And what we wanna do is actually update our UI to say that we've collected one more coin. Now we're gonna do this with Momex by creating a score state that's gonna store the value of how many coins we've collected. So let's do that. Let's come here and make a new file in our source folder. And we're gonna call this score.ts. And then in here, we're gonna import MobX. Now we've already installed MobX in this project. You just gotta do npm install MobX or uh, yarn add MobX. So what we're gonna do is import from MobX. We're gonna import make auto observable. So we're gonna use this to automatically create or um, annotate all the properties in our state object properly. Uh, sometimes you may need to use make observable if you have some special things you wanna do or specific properties that you don't wanna make observable. But for this example, I'm just gonna go with the simple make auto observable. I'm gonna call this class store state and we're gonna give it a coins property, which is gonna keep count of how many coins we have. And in our constructor here, we're gonna call make auto observable and give it this. And then MobX will automatically uh, do the right things for each property and or computed, or computed property, which are gonna be getters or setters. Uh, that you can check or learn more about that in the MobX documentation. So let's make a new instance of this score, new score state. And then we're gonna export this so that we can use it in our game and our UI scenes. So let's save that. Now let's go to our MobX scene or our game scene. Let's import that score state that we just created from score. And we're gonna import score. Now here in our back down to our to-do. So when we wanna collect one coin, really all that means is score.coins. That's the same coins property that we added here, right there. We're gonna do coins plus equals one. So now this coins object will have an updated coins property. Uh, it'll be one more than the last time. So from zero to one, two, three. Now we need to let our UI use this so that it can actually update itself. So let's go to our UI scene over here. Now here we have our score label and we want to update the score label each time that coins property changes. Now we can use this magic function from a MobX called auto run. So let's import that from MobX. So import from MobX, we're gonna import auto run. And we're gonna to wanna to import our uh, score state from score, calling it score. Okay, awesome. So down here, we're gonna call auto run. And now auto run takes a function that will automatically be called each time any observable property uh, inside that function is updated. So do this. So this is where the magic kind of is. So score label dot text is going to be coins. And we're gonna do score, score dot coins. Now, because coins here is observable and reactive, uh, MobX by some voodoo magic um, knows that it's in this function and each time that coins is updated um, anywhere else in your code, it'll call this, it'll trigger, it'll cause this function to trigger, this function pass into auto run so that it can do whatever updates it needs to do whenever this value changes. Now if you put multiple values, multiple observable properties in here, it'll also work uh, magically. It'll, it's all handled by MobX. Now let's save that. Now let's check out how this actually works and see if it's working in our preview example. Okay, we're back here. And as we collect the coin, you see that updated. 
So that UI has is already updating and we added very little to almost no code. We created our observable store, our for observable state, um, and used make auto observable, which is just the normal class as you saw. And then we simply incremented that property and using auto run, um, it let it allowed us to update our UI in our UI scene um, each time something happened to the coins property. Pretty magical. All right, so that was the gist of using MobX, but let me just show you another example that we've already coded. This is our arrow scene. Uh, you've seen the, in the preview, the arrows working. So this is our arrow scene. And you know, we create our arrows, we add it to the scene. And then here you see auto run. And in auto run, it's going to set the alpha of those uh, arrows. Now what our uh, store looks like, our state store looks like, is this store.ts. So here, similar to our score state, we have this cursor state, which is a uh, MobX observable. We use make auto observable to handle everything. And up, down, left, and right just gets changed in the game scene based on cursor keys. So if your cursor keys that up is down, we're going to set up to true. If it's uh, if is down is false, it sets um, up to false. And so once we have this in a MobX observable state, we can then in our arrows scene, use auto run and just do what we did in the UI scene to just update automatically whenever this property changes. All right, that's it for this video for using MobX in Phaser 3 to help you update UI or just keep state in sync across scenes and just make state management easier for your game, especially if you're coming from traditional web development and you've used libraries like React. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos on making games on the web with technologies and frameworks and libraries like Phaser 3, Kaboom.js, Calisius, and more, including other web libraries like MobX. Thanks for watching.